Hi everybody, welcome to my live video. Happy Monday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lauren Vanasta. I'm a clinical nutritionist and a personal chef. And today we are talking about how to properly store your groceries so they last longer. So you're not throwing money in the trash or all this rotten food that you didn't have time to eat or that you forgot about or you just didn't store it properly so it went bad faster than it should have. So I'm gonna be showing you some of my tips and hopefully you find them useful and if you apply them, you will notice your food lasting longer. Because nothing's worse than buying a bunch of, of groceries and then them going bad after a few days. And then you go to use them and they're already rotten. So I'm going to be taking you, we're doing a little bit different style of video today. I'm going to just be taking you through each of the things and how to properly store them. So you can see it up close and a more, you know, an up, more up close point of view. So let's get started. I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll just start showing you what to do. Okay, so first thing is berries. And berries are really hard to keep fresh. So what you wanna do as soon as you get them home from the grocery store, you wanna wash them in one part vinegar to 10 parts water. And I would recommend using apple cider vinegar. That's gonna be the best thing to eliminate any bacteria and to help them stay fresher longer. So once you put them in the vinegar and water mixture, you're gonna to wanna to rinse them off, dry them really well, and then put them in a refrigerator in a container with airflow. So you can put them back in the container you bought them in because it does have those holes in there, but you wanna make sure that you do the vinegar and water mixture first to help them last longer. So that's for berries. So whether it's strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, Whatever berries you normally buy, that's going to keep them fresh. So like I said, one part vinegar to 10 parts water. Rinse them, dry them, and refrigerate in a container with some airflow. All right, next we have bananas. And these are already browning, but I like my bananas really brown. So <laughs> I like them to get brown. But to slow the ripening process, you wanna separate all your bananas once you get them in the bunch, and then you want to wrap the stem in some plastic wrap. And what this does is it slows the release of the ethylene gas, which is responsible for the ripening of not only ba the banana, but also any other fruits that are stored around it. So if you're storing your bananas next to you know, your apples or pears or kiwis, any other fruits like that, those fruits that are with the bananas are gonna ripen a lot faster because of that gas that's released from the bananas. So if you do this, it'll help slow down the ripening of the banana and also help avoid ripening the other fruits around it. But I would recommend storing your bananas separately from your other fruits regardless. Alrighty, next is celery. And this can apply to celery, broccoli, and cauliflower, more of the cruciferous, uh, really fibrous types of veggies. And what you wanna do is once you wash them, you can cut them into the size that you want and you wanna wrap them in tin foil. This is gonna help keep them really crisp. And that's what you want for, those type, for these types of veggies like celery and broccoli and cauliflower. So wrap them in foil and then just put them in your vegetable drawer in the refrigerator. All right, next we have apples. Apples you want to store in the refrigerator in a crisper drawer. And you wanna keep them by themselves. You don't wanna have them with other, other fruits or other vegetables. So if you have room in your fridge to just have a whole drawer related or dedicated just to apples, they're gonna last a lot longer that way. So even though they're next to the bananas here, definitely don't store them next to the bananas. Okay, let's go up here to some garlic. And this will apply to garlic and onions. You want to store them on your countertop and you want to make sure they have some airflow. So whether it's a mesh bag, a basket, keep them so they have some airflow with them. And you want to store them separately from potatoes. You don't want your onions and garlic stored with your potatoes. So typically those three things are all stored on the counter, 
but you want them separate. So if you could do a separate basket for like garlic and onions and then another basket for potatoes, that's gonna be your best bet to keep everything fresh. And onions can last, onions and garlic can both last a really long time if they're stored properly. So keeping your onions and garlic away from your potatoes will help them from getting those funky sprouts on them. Okay, let's move on to lettuce. So as you can see, I have a clamshell type of container here. And so if you buy your lettuce in this type of a container, all you need to do is you can see in there that I put a paper towel in. You just want to put a paper towel in there, close the lid back up, and then you want to store it in your refrigerator upside down so that the moisture falls off of the lettuce and onto that paper towel. So that'll help, you can keep it in the original container that you bought it in, and that'll help absorb, absorb the moisture. And when you notice that paper towel getting moist, you wanna replace it right away with a dry paper towel, and then that'll help keep all your lettuce really fresh. And for another example, if you don't buy your lettuce in a clamshell like this, and you happen to buy it in you know, a plastic bag, you want to switch it out into a Ziploc, and you also wanna put a paper towel in there. Similar to the clamshell container, you just put a paper towel in your Ziploc, put your lettuce in, and then you're gonna to wanna to zip up the Ziploc and get most of the air out. You don't have to take all the air out. Oxygen isn't going to make your lettuce wilt faster, it's more moisture. So you wanna just take some of the air out and then you'll be good to go. So those are some things you can do with lettuce. You can also store your lettuce in a glass container. You know, if you have a big glass bowl and you put a paper towel over your lettuce in that bowl and then you put a piece of plastic wrap over it, that's another option for your lettuce if you want. I just find it hard to find bowls big enough <laughs> and that takes up a lot of space in the refrigerator as well. But you can do that if you like. All right, moving on to asparagus, and this applies to asparagus as well as fresh herbs like cilantro, parsley, you can also do scallions, those types of things. And what you're gonna do, I'll zoom in a little, you can see there's some water. So you wanna almost treat this like it's a fresh flower. So what you do is you wanna get your asparagus from the grocery, when you get it home from the grocery store, you wanna trim the ends and then you wanna put it in a jar with water. And then you can go ahead and put that in your refrigerator. And if you wanted to, depending on what you have in your refrigerator, if you have like meat and dairy, you can get a plastic bag and drape it over the asparagus tops. And so like I said, this applies to fresh herbs as well. And if you don't wanna store your fresh herbs in the refrigerator, you can also store them on the counter in some sunshine. You just wanna make sure you're changing out the water just like you would a fresh flower and that'll help keep them fresh and growing and nice and nice and vibrant. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Let me know. So next we're gonna move on to nuts and seeds. So we have some pine nuts, some sunflower seeds, and some pumpkin seeds. So I mentioned this before to you guys, but when you are buying your nuts and seeds, if you're not gonna consume them within about two weeks, you wanna put them in either the refrigerator or the freezer. So take them out of the package you got them in, put them in a freezer safe or uh, any type of Ziploc bag if you're just putting them in the refrigerator and store them in there and they'll last a lot longer and they won't go rancid. A lot of times nuts and seeds can go rancid really fast because of how high the fat content is and how much oil is in them. But if you put them in the refrigerator or the freezer, they're gonna last you a lot longer, especially things like pine nuts that you might not use all the time and just use in a pesto recipe or you know to top a certain dish. Your nuts are gonna stay a lot fresher for a lot longer if you store them in colder temperatures. Alrighty, next we have some carrots, and I shared this tip with you guys I think last week, but this applies to carrots, it applies to beets, pretty much anything that has you know those big green tops on them. What you wanna do is you want to cut those off separate them from whatever the vegetable is and store them separately. The greens on the top are gonna make these carrots get a lot softer faster and we want carrots to stay crisp up until we use them. So taking those green tops off is really gonna help your carrots to last longer as well as your beets, uh, you know, turnips, things like that. So 
If you have anything with a big green top on them, cut those off and store them separately. Don't throw away the greens because you can use them in a lot of things. All right, let's see. That's all I have, but I wanted to also talk to you guys about different um, tips. Oh, I guess I'll flip over back to my face. Okay, hello again. <laughs> I'm just going through these really quick. I didn't want you guys to have to sit through another hour long video today. And some of these are really easy to explain, so we didn't need that much time. But another tip to keep your food, if you're storing prepped food, so for those of you that do meal prep, I want you guys to focus on storing your food in glass containers. Glass containers really help to preserve freshness and not to mention you don't have any harmful chemicals from plastic containers leaching into your food. So I've shared different glass containers that I like. I've also shared that you can put pretty much anything in a mason jar. So mason jars are awesome for that too, for not only mason jar salads, but even just storing soups or sauces or anything like that, you can just throw it in a mason jar. They're airtight and sealed and they're good to go. Also, one of the tips I like or I use for myself, especially if I just made a really quick shopping list or if I didn't make a shopping list at all and I didn't meal prep for that week, what I will do is I will write down everything I bought at the grocery store on a piece of paper and I'll either hang it up on my fridge, leave it on my desk, wherever I'm going to see it. And then that way I know what I bought. Because if you guys live in a house with a lot of people or you just have a really stuffed refrigerator and food gets lost super easy and you end up going in there a week later and you're like, oh, I totally forgot I bought this. Having this list available of everything that you bought will really help you remember what's in your refrigerator or your pantry. So you see that list and you say, oh yeah, I bought some carrots, where did those go? And then you'll know that they're in there without having to see them. So it's really helpful to not let anything go to waste that way too. If you have a week where you didn't prep, you didn't make a list or anything like that, just make sure when you get home from the grocery store that you write everything down that you bought and then that way you know what you have. That's a really helpful tip to avoid food waste and you know sometimes we just forget what we buy so having it written down and in front of us is going to help a lot. Okay, uh, let's see. I think that's all I have for you guys today. I wanted to make it simple and show you guys things that you use often and if you're storing meats keep them separate from fresh vegetables that's I think everyone knows that and if you have hard cheeses wrap them in parchment paper that helps them stay fresh as well they don't like to, or cheese doesn't like to be super tightly wrapped in like saran wrap parchment paper for hard cheeses is awesome. And I don't know, do you guys have any questions about anything specific that you buy at the store and you're wondering how to keep it fresh? I went through the majority of common stuff that everyone buys. And like I said, for prep food, stick to glass if possible. And mason jars are awesome for everything. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to let you guys go. Nice quick video for you today. And if you have any questions, feel free to post a comment. If you're watching the replay, please still ask questions and I can answer them for you. And if it will be helpful, let me know. I can always make up a little document for you guys with all this written down if that's helpful. Just let me know and I can do that for you guys. So have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching. Bye guys.